My sisters and brothers, I greet you in the name of Christ. Grace and peace be with you all. friends in Christ, we bring before you this pastor and bishop who has served among us faithfully. With gratitude in our hearts, we send him forth to be chief pastor and primate of this church. Tell us who you are. I am Michael Bruce Curry, the child of God baptized in St. Simon of Cyrene Church, Maywood, Illinois, on May 3rd, 1953. And since that time, I have sought to be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Michael, Bishop in the Church of God, we have anticipated your arrival with great joy. In the name of Christ, we greet you. With all my heart, I thank you for your welcome. I hope to serve among you in Christ's name and in the joy of the Spirit. May the peace of God be upon this gathering and all who witness from afar. Michael, during the 78th General Convention, you were elected by the House of Bishops to succeed me as the 27th Presiding Bishop of the Episcopal Church and as its primate. Michael, your election by the House of Bishops was confirmed by the House of Deputies, and you accepted your election in the presence of both houses. Michael, do you now, in the presence of God and the church gathered for worship here and in various places, commit yourself to this trust and responsibility? I do, and with God's help, will strive to be a faithful shepherd and pastor among you. Dear friends in Christ, will all you who witness this pledge do all in your power to support and uphold Michael in this ministry?
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. There is one body and one spirit. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, by our baptism into the death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, you turn us from the old life of sin. Grant that we, being reborn to new life in him, may live in righteousness and holiness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Through the Paschal Mystery, dear friends, we are buried with Christ in baptism into his death and raised with him to newness of life. I call upon you, therefore, to renew with Michael as he accepts his new ministry in this church the solemn promises and vows of holy baptism by which we renounce Satan and all evil works and promise to serve God faithfully in the Holy Catholic Church. Do you reaffirm your renunciation of evil and renew your commitment to Jesus Christ? Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of the Son of God. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under the mind of Spilet, was crucified and died in his burial. He descended to the dead. On the very day he rose again, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of saints, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the rest. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread, and in the prayers? I will, O God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, Repent and return to the Lord. I will, with God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will, with God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will, with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will, with God's help. May Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and bestowed upon us the forgiveness of sins, keep us in eternal life by His grace in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. We thank you, Almighty God, for the gift of water. Over it, the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. Through it, you led the children of Israel out of their bondage in Egypt into the land of promise. In it, your son Jesus received the baptism of John and was anointed by the Holy Spirit as the Messiah, the Christ, to lead us through his death and resurrection from the bondage of sin into everlasting life. We thank you, Father, for the water of baptism, which signifies our eternal covenant with you. 
In it, we are buried with Christ in his death. By it, we share in his resurrection. Through it, we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in joyful obedience to Christ, we bring into his fellowship those who come to him in faith, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. We, we pray you, O God, sanctify this water by the power of your Holy Spirit, that those who here are cleansed from sin and born again may continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Savior. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever.
Since 1941, the Cathedral Church of St. Peter and St. Paul has been the seat of the presiding bishop. On this historic day, we extend to you the hospitality of this Cathedral Church for the exercise of your ministry and invite you to take your seat in this chair, which is symbolic of the office of the presiding bishop of the Episcopal Church and primate. Holy God, in Christ you make all things new. Today, in this house of prayer for all people, I devote myself to your service. Grant me wisdom and compassion that I may be a faithful witness to your gospel and a pastor to your people. Fill my life with praise for your marvelous works, that I may serve you with joy. Fill your church with the power of your spirit, that our ministry together, beginning today in this cathedral church, may bring healing to your world and glory to your name. Kindle in us the flame of holy charity and the power of faith that transforms the world. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
Michael, receive this pastoral staff, the symbol of your authority and ministry as chief pastor and primate of the Episcopal Church. May Christ the Good Shepherd sustain you as you carry it in his name. I receive this staff from you and give thanks to God for your faithful ministry and for all who have carried this responsibility before me. Greet your, greet your new presiding bishop and his family. My prayer comes from the book of Proverbs, from the words of the mother of Lemuel, the king of Massa. In Proverbs, King Lemuel's mother said to her powerful son, Patach pichash fat sedek vadin oni ve'evyon. Speak up, judge righteously, champion the poor and the needy. King Lemuel was not an Israelite king, but one from another religion. Over a thousand years later, Moses Maimonides, the medieval sage and rabbi, interpreted the verse Petach to speak out, Michael, with clarity and conviction. Shvat Sedek, to guide gently in the pursuit of fairness and Vadin Oni the Avyon, and as part of this community, help first those who need help most. My blessing for you, Bishop Michael, as you begin your new journey. May you speak and live always 
with clarity and conviction. May you guide gently your flock and all of us not in your flock who will look to you for leadership and direction. May you always shower your attention on the poor and vulnerable and the least of us. May you do your best to walk as God wants you to walk. And let us all say, Amen. Amen. Gracious God, shower upon this your servant Michael the grace and power you gave to your apostles in proclaiming the good news of our redemption in Jesus. As an ambassador for Christ, guide him as he seeks to shepherd this church in its devotion to your mission in the world. Grant him every joy in serving your people and every courage of conviction for what is good and right and just for all. So bless his heartbeat and his outlook. So inspire his writing and his speaking. So direct his words and his ways that the glories of your reign of love and peace may be known throughout this nation and to the ends of the earth. This we pray in the name of your dear Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. My prayers comes from the Holy Quran. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In the name of God, the most compassionate, the most merciful. God Almighty, our Creator, we celebrate the dignity you have bestowed on all human beings by creating us all in your own image. Help us to understand what you have taught us in your Holy Quran. Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu, ya ayyuhal nas, inna khalaqnakum min dhakarin wa untha. وَجَعَلْنَاكُمْ شُعُوبًا وَقَبَائِلَ لِتَعَارَفُوا إِنَّ أَكْرَمَكُمْ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ أَتْقَاكُمْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ عَلِيمٌ خَبِيرٌ That you have made us unique nations and tribes that we may know one another. Our Lord, fill our hearts with mercy and compassion for one another. O oh Lord, of the heavens and the earth guide our hearts and make us act with love friendship and justice god the merciful and compassionate we ask your blessing on bishop michael give him the strength to continue the tradition of strong leadership in the denomination may his leadership be known not only by a lively pastoral spirit within the Episcopal Church, but by outreach to all people of faith. Amen. Holy God, we acknowledge with awe that you have blessed your servant Michael with all that he needs to be who you have called him to be. We pray that with humility and grace, he will claim the gifts you have given him and use them to your glory and honor. Grant him the leadership qualities of Moses, the wisdom of Solomon, the courage of Esther, the risk-taking attitude of Peter, and the hope of Martha. Help him to seek and do your will so that the world will know that he loves and follows Jesus. Embolden him to speak truth to power, to keep a servant's heart, and to work faithfully to cast a vision of peace 
and reconciliation for the Episcopal Church and your whole church here on earth. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon him, we pray, in the name of the one who calls and sends us today and every day. with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have knit together your elect in one communion and fellowship in the mystical body of your Son, Christ our Lord. Give us grace so to follow your blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living, that we may come to those ineffable joys that you have prepared for those who truly love you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. O God, you made us in your image and redeemed us through Jesus, your Son. Look with compassion on the whole human family. Take away the arrogance and hatred which infect our hearts. Break down the walls that separate us. Unite us in bonds of love and work through our struggle and confusion to accomplish your purposes on earth, that in your good time, all nations and races may serve you in harmony around your heavenly throne through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O God of unchangeable power and eternal light, look favorably on your whole church, that wonderful and sacred mystery. By the effectual working of your providence, carry out in tranquility the plan of salvation. Let the whole world See and know that things which were cast down are being raised up, and things which had grown old are being made new, and that all things are being brought to their perfection by whom, by him through whom all things were made, 
your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. A shoot shall come out from the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide what his eyes hear, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt around his waist and faithfulness the belt around his loins. The wolf shall live with the lamb. The leopard shall lie down with the kid. The calf and the lion and the fatling together and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze. Their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the asps, and the weaned child shall put its hand on the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on my holy mountain. For the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. The word of the Lord.
Segunda lectura. Una lectura de la revelación a San Juan. Después vi un cielo nuevo y vi una tierra nueva, porque el primer cielo y la primera tierra habían dejado de existir, y también el mar. Vi la ciudad santa, la nueva Jerusalén, que bajaba del cielo de la presencia de Dios. Estaba arreglada como una novia vestida para su prometido. Y oí una fuerte voz que venía del trono y que decía, Aquí está el lugar donde Dios vive con los hombres. Vivirá con ellos y ellos serán sus pueblos. Y Dios mismo estará con ellos como su Dios. Secará todas las lágrimas de ellos y ya no habrá muerte, ni llanto, ni lamento, ni dolor, porque todo lo que antes existía ha dejado de existir. El que estaba sentado en el trono dijo, yo hago nuevas todas las cosas. Y también dijo, escribe, porque estas palabras son verdaderas y dignas de confianza. Después me dijo, ya está hecho. Yo soy el alfa y la omega, el principio y el fin. Palabra del Señor.
the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Uka, which hotawa, which hayaka, he ha, a hawa, ekta iaya, na he iotanka, he ha, wa ushpe, which haki echi, a he be, Uka, e hudukawa, na wa ushpe, which haki echa, he ya, dona chante, ma he o sheet each hitapi. Ki hena which haya wa stepi che, machpia wo ki chonze, ki he tawa pi eche, dona che api ki, hena which haya wa stepi, hena which haki hapi, da dona o shi hapi, ki hena which haya wa stepi, maka ki de tawa pi da. Dona wo o wo dana o wo te te ti tapi na i pujapi ki hena which haya wa stepi che hena ima pi ta dona wa ushti tapi ki hena which haya wa stepi hena o shi which ha tapi ta dona chante e ech hi ta ki hena which haya wa stepi hena wa kantanka wa ya ka pikta dona wo o ki e ka khapi ki hena which haya wa stepi hena wa kantanka chi cha i which hi ki te a pikta dona wo o watana ech hampi ki o shi chaya ku a pi ki hena which haya wa stepi makpia wo ki chonze ki he tawa pi eche donha ani api na shi chaya ni chu api na mie o itonshia daku shi cha o washi eni chi api ki ha ni ya wa stepi eche wi yushki pi na ni na Chante washtepo machpia ekte ochi yo peni ya pi tanka yanka which hashta wokcha ni toka umpi no hena ish eya heche which haku api no. The Holy Gospel of our Lord. And now, in the name of our loving, liberating, and life-giving God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, good morning. <laughs> That's an understatement. Good morning. <laughs> 
It, it really is a joy, um, um, a privilege and a blessing to be able to be here for the church to gather, to give God thanks and to pray God's blessing, not only on us, but on this world and the entire human family. Allow me before saying a few words in the, okay, all right. <laughs> Before the sermon, <laughs> I, I do want to take a, a point of personal privilege to say um, I am looking forward to working with my sister, the president of the House of Deputies. We have spent some time together already this summer, and I am looking forward to great years ahead, my sister. Thank you for your leadership. Yeah, we're going to do it. I also want to say a word of thanks on your behalf for Dick Shorey. He is the spouse of our presiding bishop. But no, no, the other presiding bishop, the other one. <laughs> right. And in a time when there is often debate and genuine consternation as to whether or not courageous, effective, and faithful leadership is even possible, the Episcopal Church can say to the world, we have had a leader and her name is Catherine Jeffert Shorey. It is an understatement to say that we live in a deeply complex and difficult time in the life of the world. Life is not easy. The old saying used to go, it ain't easy being green and it ain't easy being human and it never has been and never will be. This is a time when again, it is an understatement to say that there are challenges before the church and communities of faith. This is a time of difficulty and hardship for many, a time of goodness and joy for others and a time when we must even find ways to save the Mother Earth, who is the mother of us all. These are, as Dickens said of his time, the best of times and the worst of times. But that's all right. See, we follow Jesus. And you remember what he said at the Last Supper? Now, I know you weren't there, but it's in the book. <laughs> in John's version of the Last Supper, before, this is just a few hours before Jesus would be arrested, he said, in this world, you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Or as that great biblical scholar and exegete said, his name was Bobby McFerrin, don't worry, be happy. <laughs> Don't worry, be happy. And that's what we're going to talk about this morning. Don't worry, be happy. Let me give you a text. 
Now, y'all may have to get used to this. I have a dialectical relationship with the passages that were read earlier. But this text is directly related to all three. From the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 17. When the angry crowd could not find the apostle Paul and Silas, they dragged Jason and some other believers before the city authorities, shouting, now this is a description, I think this is one of the first descriptions of the followers of Jesus. These people who have been turning the world upside down have come here also. They are acting contrary to the decrees of the emperor, saying there is another king named Jesus. Oh, I'd love to see the Washington Post talk about the Episcopal Church that way. <laughs> what you have there is a first century description of the Jesus movement. These people who have been turning the world upside down, which is really turning it right side up, have come here also. They say there's another king and another way following Jesus. That's the Jesus movement. A few centuries later, about the 19th, Julia Ward Howe, in the midst of the ambiguities and the uncertainties and the tragedies of America's civil war, sensed and saw that same movement present again. And she said, in the beauty of the lilies, Christ was born across the sea with a glory in his bosom that transfigures you and me. As he died to make folk holy, let us live to set all free while God is marching on glory, glory, hallelujah. God's truth is marching on. That's the Jesus movement. Stay with me, I'm coming to it. And I want to suggest that what was true in the first century and true in the 19th century is equally and maybe more profoundly true in this new 21st century. What God has done in the past God can do again. The God who parted Red Seas can do it all over again. The God who raised the dead to life can do it all over again. So don't worry. Be happy. God has not given up on the world. And God is not finished with the Episcopal Church yet. The, the, the great liberating truth, I think, um, it, of this Jesus movement is that actually it takes some of the burden off of us as well as some of the ego off of us. Because the truth is, Jesus did not come into this world to found a religion. He really did. Religious faith is important. Don't y'all go out here saying the new presiding bishop said religion is no good. I didn't say that. <laughs> but he didn't come here to found a religion, though religious faith is critical. Nor did he come here to establish an institution or an organization. Um, you will not find much of an organizational structure um, or a diagram of who's accountable to who um, in the New Testament at all. But organizations and institutions can serve his cause. No, Jesus did not come here to found a religion or to start an institution. Jesus came to inaugurate, to begin, to catalyze a movement. A movement that could change and transform this world from, from the nightmare it often is into the dream that God intends for all of us. He came to start a movement. No, no. he came to continue a movement. See, Jesus picked up where John the Baptist left off. And John the Baptist left off where Isaiah and Jeremiah and Ezekiel 
and, and, and Habakkuk and Obadiah and Nahum. Y'all hadn't heard of those prophets, had you? Uh, but they're there. Where, where, where the prophets of Israel left off and they picked up where Moses had left off and Moses climbed and went to the mountaintop and took folk to the promised land. Oh, Jesus was picking up the baton of a movement. And that movement is to transform this world. See, that's what, that's, that's what Isaiah was talking about. God's dream of transforming this world from its nightmare into God's dream where the wolf will lie down with the lamb, where they will not hurt or destroy in all God's holy mountain, for the earth will be filled with the glory of God as the water covers the sea. When God has God's way, folk don't hurt each other. When God has God's way, people don't kill each other. When God has God's way, we don't let children starve. When God has God's way. God's got a passionate dream. Verna Doja taught us this years ago. God had a passionate dream for this world when God said, let there be anything. A dream that, that one day there would be a new heaven. This is in Revelation 21. Uh, oh, let the world, let the record note that the Episcopal Church was quoting the book of Revelation. <laughs> Revelation 21, you see, John has this vision from his prison exile on Patmos, and he says, Behold, I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven like a bride adorned for her bridegroom. And the dwelling of God was now with human beings, and they hungered no more. They suffered no more. No more war. No more violence. No more injustice. No more or indignity, but God's love is all and all. But we got a God who's got a dream for this world. Jesus came to show us the way out of the nightmare into the dream for us all. That's what's going on in the lesson from Acts. They were talking about this dream. And folks said, you must be crazy. But that's what's going on. They said, you know, these people who have been turning the world upside down all over the Roman Empire, we've heard rumors of them, they've actually come here also in Thessalonica. Um, and, and, and part of the reason that they seem to be turning the world upside down in this movement is they are following another king beside the emperor Caesar, which is a way of saying this Jesus and his way actually does turn our world and the world upside down, which is actually right side up. Got on a plane earlier this week and uh, I was flying to leave in Raleigh, North Carolina, was, was going to New York to um, spend a couple of days there and, and to spend a day with Bishop Catherine on, on the Tuesday and we had a we had ourselves a good time. We really did. Anyway, on the plane, on the, on the flight up, um, we were, I mean, I was in, you know, a little bitty plane, and, and um, we hit some turbulence, which is normal on planes. And uh, as I was flying, something said, Michael Curry, do you have any idea what you are about to do? <laughs> And, and then one of those moments of reality where it gets real, where I, I'm gonna tell you the truth, where I said, you haven't got the foggiest idea what you're supposed to do. And sort of a cross moment of quasi terror. And then I thought, well, maybe I could negotiate with Catherine. I could be the Poseidon Bishop Coadjutor for a little while <laughs> and, and get her to stay on for a little bit longer. Um, and then I really did kind of, I mean, I didn't break out in sweats, but I remember it was, in, this is all going it's on inside my head, and I realized that we're hitting the turbulence, and there I was in this little bitty plane, you know, they're not that big anymore, and the seats aren't that big, and I was strapped in, you know, they got you strapped down, almost like, you know, you're in surgery or something, and there I was on the bouncing, and the plane was bouncing, I said, is this a parable of the next nine years? <laughs> And after a while, I, you know, something just, this thought really did pop into my head. 
it literally actually was my godmother's voice and um, where she would say, all right, buddy, bucko, get over yourself. And something did say, Michael Curry, it's not about you. See, you thought you came here for the installation of the 27th presiding bishop and primate. That was just a teaser to get you here. <laughs> the real reason we are here was at the beginning of this service when we renewed our vows of baptism to renounce Satan and all that hurts and harms the human family and God's creation and to turn to Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord and to become the Jesus movement in this world. That's why we're here. That's why we came, because that movement turns the world up. Am I making some sense so far? Is this good? That, yeah, that, that movement has the power to, 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 to take things which had been cast down and raise them up. It has the power to take things that had grown old and make them new. It has the power to, to give life to, to God's church and God's people. It has the power to give, to give life to this world. That, that, that movement is why we're here. We are the Jesus movement. And we've been sent and called into this world not to settle for what is, but to dream and work for what shall be. How did George Bernard Shaw say it? Some men see things as they are and ask why. We who follow Jesus of Nazareth dream things that never were and ask why not? Why not a world where children do not suffer? Why not? And that's what Jesus was getting at when he said in those Beatitudes from the Sermon on the Mount, Bless, I'm talking about a different world, he was saying. I'm talking about a different way of being. It's not an accident that, I'm going to land the plane in a minute, don't worry. Um, but it's not an accident that the Sermon on the Mount and the Beatitudes that were our gospel actually follow Jesus calling the first disciples, telling them, follow me and I will make you fish for people. Follow me and I will show you a life that you didn't know you could have. Follow me and I will show you a life of dignity, integrity, vitality. Follow me and I will show you that love is the only way. Because when you follow me, blessed are the poor and the poor in spirit. When you follow me, blessed are the merciful, the compassionate. When you follow me, blessed are those who hunger and thirst that God's righteous justice might prevail. Blessed are the peacemakers. Blessed are you when you are persecuted just because you tried to love somebody. Rejoice and be exceeding glad for so they persecuted the prophets before you love your enemies. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who despitefully use you. This way of Jesus really does turn the world upside down. And I can show you how. You remember, Jesus spent a lot of time with lawyers. I got a feeling there are a few in here. I know they're off of North Carolina. I know there are a few of y'all in here, but that's all right. But, but, but Jesus spent a lot of time with lawyers, and some of his best conversations were in the critical, conversational, almost Socratic engagement with the questions of lawyers, sometimes those wanting to know and sometimes trying to trick him. And you'll remember it was on one occasion where one lawyer came to Jesus and said, Great teacher, in the entire legal edifice of Moses, um, what is the greatest of all the laws in the law of Moses? And Jesus pulled back, reached back to Deuteronomy and Leviticus and pulled together two passages of Moses. And he said, this is it. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and all your strength. This is the first and the great commandment. And the second is like unto it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two, love of God, Love of neighbor hang all the law and the prophets, everything Moses was talking about, all the justice that the 
prophets proclaim. Everything that's in the Bible is all about love of God, love of neighbor. That love will turn this world upside down. And if it's not about love, it is not about God. This, this thing will really turn the world upside down. I'm telling you, I'm not talking about a Hallmark greeting card right now. Uh, we're talking about the most dynamic reality in all of creation. This love turns the world upside down. And I can prove it to you. You remember the parable of the Good Samaritan? Uh, Y'all remember the parable of the Good Samaritan? <laughs> now, that's in Luke's gospel, in Luke 10, where... Jesus and a lawyer got into a, a discussion and, and uh, um, you know, they got into the, they came to an agreement that, uh, a mediated agreement that, um, the, that Moses basically taught love of God and love of neighbor is the whole thing. And so the lawyer did a lawyerly thing. He said, okay, well, great teacher, I will concede that love of God and love of neighbor is the whole thing, um, but that could have far-reaching impact. So could we be more precise in our language? Could we narrow down or clarify the definition of neighbor. How expansive is it, or better, how inclusive do you mean? And that's when Jesus told the parable. You remember the story? Okay, y'all were scaring me. Uh, we only got nine years. I mean, you know. Anyway, you know, the guy was walking, somebody was walking from Jerusalem to Jericho, and they fell among, the guy fell among thieves, remember, is beaten up, and um, you know, a, a religious leader came by and saw him beaten up, but just kind of went on the other side. And uh, another prominent citizen came by and walked on the other side. And a third one came by and did the same. And then a Samaritan, who was like somebody that people didn't agree with, basically, this Samaritan came along and he saw the guy in need and went over and helped and bandaged him up, took care of him, um, took him to a hospital, paid his bill. Lord have mercy, yeah, paid his bill and made sure the guy was cared for. And Jesus then said to the lawyer, now who was the neighbor to the man? See, Jesus didn't fall for his question. He said, no, 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 who was the neighbor to the man? He said, the one who showed compassion. Jesus was telling him, that's what God is like and that's what God wants you to be like. Now, change the story just a little bit. A Christian was walking on the road from Jerusalem to Jericho. Yeah, you're getting Episcopalian on me now. You got quiet. You know I'm coming somewhere, right? Yeah, this, this Christian was walking on the road from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he fell among thieves and was beaten up. And another very prominent Christian, you know, maybe a bishop, you know, came by, <laughs> saw him on the other side and said, you know, I got a ring, I don't want to lose it. So he just went on. Anyway, another one, you know, another prominent Christian, I mean, somebody came by, saw him and was nervous about getting involved and just kind of went on. And the third one did the same thing. And then a brother or sister who was Muslim came by. Help me, somebody. See where I'm going now? That's what Jesus is trying to teach us. A uh, Muslim brother or sister came by and saw their fellow human being in need and went and took care of them and brought healing into their life. Who was neighbor? That's what God is concerned about. Or change it even more. A police officer was beaten and wounded. And it was an African-American young man or a Latino young man or woman who brought healing or flip it. We could go through a variety of groups but I'll get in trouble. But you see what Jesus is talking about? He's talking about turning this world upside down, which is really right side up by the incredible energy and creativity and life-giving power of the love that comes from God. That's what can save us all. That's what can save this planet. That's what can lift this church up and set us on fire.
Well, I am. I'm going to sit down um, soon. Uh, I promise. <laughs> I promise. I promise. Last summer, this past summer, at the general convention of our church, I think the convention did a remarkable thing. If I heard our general convention, which speaks for our church, I heard our gener general convention invite us as a church to say, take this Jesus movement seriously and for real. And I heard a call from that general convention, a call for evangelism and a call for reconciliation, to work for evangelism, sharing the good news of Jesus and to work for reconciliation, beginning with racial reconciliation, to cross the divides that separate us. I was talking to a friend about this and I said, you know, it really was remarkable. It was, there, there was a sense of coherence. There really was. I got a feeling the Holy Spirit really did show up. I really do. And um, it was just remarkable. And I was telling a friend about this, and, and she responded. She said, you all want to do what? I said, well, we could do evangelism and racial reconciliation and all the reconciliation that comes follows from that. She said, you were talking about doing two of the most difficult things for a church to do. Imagine for a second um, you're watching Jeopardy or a game show. And the question is, two words in the English language that begin with E that are rarely heard in the same sentence. I have a feeling evangelism and Episcopalian probably would be a good candidate, right? <laughs> so you see that. And, and then uh, if you think about reconciliation, beginning with racial reconciliation, we are talking about crossing the great divides that have separated us as the human family of God, the divides of race and class and sexual orientation, the divides of our politics and our ideology, all of the divides that have separated the children of God who are meant to be God's one human family. This is the most difficult work imaginable. But I'm here to tell you we can do it. I'm here to tell you we can do it because evangelism is not what other people say it is. Evangelism is sharing the faith that is in you and listening and learning from the faith that's in somebody else. It's not just about you talking. It's about listening and sharing. It's about a relationship where God can get in the midst and not us controlling the outcome of the relationship, letting God do the controlling and take somebody where God wants them to go. Yeah, that's, that's what we're talking about. And, 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 and this reconciliation, beginning with racial reconciliation, we're talking about finding ways to move beyond, as that great prayer from the prayer book, beyond our struggle and confusion to God helping us to become God's human family, beyond race, beyond class, beyond politics, beyond social economic, beyond education, because in Christ, there is no east, no west. In him, no south, no north. And in this work of reconciliation, we can join hands with others. We do so as followers of Jesus, as the Jesus movement. And we join hands with our brothers and sisters of other Christian communities. We join hands with brothers and sisters of other religious traditions and faith. We join hands with brothers and sisters who may be agnostic or atheist or who just may be on a journey, we join hands with all people of goodwill to work for a world where the earth is clean and whole again, where children do not starve, where justice really does roll down like a mighty stream, where every man, woman, and child is treated as a child of God, both in the eyes of law and in the eyes of us all. We can join together with other people about that, precisely because we follow Jesus. And we can do it.
because the Holy Spirit has done evangelism and reconciliation before. That's the advantage of being in a movement. It's not on us. In the late 1940s, when uh, the armed forces of our country had not yet been desegregated, long before Brown versus Board of Education of Topeka, Kansas, long before Rosa Parks stood up for Jesus by sitting down on the bus, long before while Martin King was in seminary, and Jackie Robinson had just started playing baseball in the major leagues, an African-American couple went to an Episcopal church and they were the only people of color in the room. This is in the great heat of segregation and separation of the races. And they went to the church. The woman was, had become an Episcopalian. The man was studying for the Baptist ministry. And they sat there. Now, this is the old days of the 1928 Book of Common Prayer. And the service went along fairly normally. And then he got to communion. And a woman had told her fiance, they were just engaged at the time, you know, when it comes time for communion, I'll go up and you can just sit here or you can go up and get a blessing. And he said, well, I'll just sit here and see what happens. And um, the, you know, the priest did Eucharistic prayer and all of that. And they were prepared for communion for people to go up. The gifts of God for the people of God. And then people came up one by one and, or came up and knelt at the altar rail. The priest, you know, took the bread, the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, given to thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. Take and eat this and remember that Christ died for thee and feed on him in thy heart by faith with that. Y'all remember that? Somebody remembers that, right? Yeah, somebody remembers that. Yeah. And, and that went all fine. And um, then the moment came when the fiance, African-American woman, she got, came up to the altar rail and everybody else was not um, black. I was trying to figure out how to say that delicately, but they weren't black, right? <laughs> and so that was okay while the bread was getting passed out, but then, then the chalice came. And the man looked up and saw there was just one cup. And it had wine in it too. But the wine wasn't the issue. It was just one cup. And he watched as the priest in those days, we didn't have Eucharistic ministers, the priest did it all. Anyway, in, in those days, uh, the, the priest came, the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ shed for thee, preserve thy body and soul and heaven, let's drink, drink this and remember that Christ died for thee and feed on him in thy heart by faith with thanksgiving. And so the priest did that, goes to each person. Then he got to the lady before um, the woman, gave her the cup, and then he gave the cup to the fiance, the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ given for thee, and the man looked out as if to say, I'm going to see what's going to happen now. See, this is before Brown, Brown versus Board of Education of Topeka, Kansas. Jackie Robinson was just breaking into the major leagues. Martin Luther King was still in seminary. Rosa Parks hadn't stood up for Jesus by sitting down on that bus. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ given for thee, and the fiancé took it, and then he looked. The next person, the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ given for thee, preserve thy body and soul. Take and drink this in remembrance that Christ died for thee, and be thankful. And he was dumbfounded. And years later, he would say that he joined the Episcopal Church because he really hadn't imagined that that could happen. In America and he said any church where blacks and whites drink out of the same cup knows something about the gospel I want to be a part of Holy Spirit has done evangelism and racial reconciliation before in the Episcopal Church because that man and woman were the parents 
of the 27th Presiding Bishop of the Episcopal Church. God's children, all of us. No matter our race, no matter our religion, no matter our class, our stripe, our type, we're God's children. And we are God's baptized children who are part of Jesus' movement to change this world by the power of love. God really does love us. God actually cares about us and this world. And God has not given up. And if God has not given up on this world, we dare not give up on it either. And God is not finished with this church. God has work for us to do. Jesus has shown us the way, and we are the Jesus movement. So my brothers and sisters, walk together, children. Don't you get weary, because there's a great camp meeting in the promised land. Don't worry. Be happy. God love you. God bless you. And God hold us all, always, in those almighty hands of love. God bless you.
Dios of steadfast love. In every age, you draw a people to yourself to live with you in a covenant of fidelity and faithfulness. Your prophets cast your vision of a reign of righteousness and peace. In Jesus, we see the way of your blessing. By the Spirit, your saints in glory quicken our desire to share in the joy and praise of your continuing creation. Hear our prayers for the newness only you can bring. Transforming God. Amen. Unite your church in following Christ, who leads us to serve your redeeming purpose with daring obedience and renewed imagination. Transforming God. Amen. Challenge all who govern throughout the world to weave the fabric of a common good so strong, no evil inclination can tear it. Transforming God. Makapangyarihan Dios, look with compassion upon this broken world. Cause us, the first and the found, to respond in word and deed to the cries of the last and the lost. Transforming God. Come as healing balm to the sick and suffering, as rest to the weary, as promise to the despairing, as presence to the anxious, as companionship to the fearful, as discernment to the doubting. Transforming God, Open the gates of a larger life to the dying and to those who have died. May they enter with all your saints into your promise of eternal life and unending joy. Transforming God. God of lion and lamb, you gather all that lives in seeming opposition into a wholeness of profound harmony and peace. You bless meekness and call us from fear to faithfulness, from privilege to humility, from the allure of power to the strength of weakness. Grant us grace to live as a beatitude community, yearning for your promise of new heaven and new earth. Come here. Come now, in the strong name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Our brothers and sisters, the peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace, my brothers. Peace, peace, brother.
I know we're a happy church, but we don't want to be here all day. <laughs> if you'll slowly find your seats, we're a happy church. God love you. God love you. Yeah, once the movie gets going. <laughs> Ascribe to the Lord the honor to his name. Bring offerings and come into God's courts.
we offer this Holy Eucharist to the greater glory of Almighty God, praying God's particular and special blessing on this church, on all peoples of faith and goodwill, praying God's blessing on this creation and on the entire human family of God. El Señor se con ustedes. El abenamos los corazanos. Demos gracias a Dios nuestro Señor. We praise you and we bless you, holy and gracious God, source of life abundant. From before time you made ready the creation your spirit moved over the deep and brought all things into being, sun, moon, and stars, earth, winds, and waters, and every living thing. You made us in your image and taught us to walk in your ways. But we rebelled against you and wandered far away. And yet, as a mother cares for her children, you would not forget us. Time and again, you called us to live in the fullness of your love. So this day, we join with saints and angels in the chorus of praise that rings through eternity, lifting our voices to magnify you as we sing. to you, holy and living God, to deliver us from the power of sin and death, and to reveal the riches of your grace, you looked with favor upon Mary, your willing servant, that she might conceive and bear a son, Jesus, the holy child of God. Living among us, Jesus loved us. He broke bread with outcasts and sinners, healed the sick, and proclaimed good news to the poor. He yearned to draw all the world to himself, yet we were heedless of his call to walk in love. Then the time came for him to complete upon the cross the sacrifice of his life and to be glorified by you. On the night before he died for us, Jesus was at table with his friends. He took bread, gave thanks to you, broke it, and gave it to them and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus cooked the cup of wine. Again, he gave thanks to you, gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Now gathered at your table, O God of all creation, and remembering Christ crucified and risen, who was and is and is to come, we offer to you our gifts of bread and wine and ourselves a living sacrifice. Pour out your spirit upon these gifts that they may be the body and blood of Christ. Breathe your spirit over the whole earth and make us your new creation, the body of Christ given for the world you have made. In the
the fullness of time, bring us with all your saints from every tribe and language and people and nation to feast at the banquet prepared from the foundation of the world. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. With saints and martyrs through the ages, let us join hands and pray with confidence in the language in which we first learned this prayer as our Savior has taught us. These are the gifts of God. We are the people of God. 
Take them in remembrance that Jesus Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Almighty Father, we thank you for feeding us with the holy food of the body and blood of your Son, and for uniting us through him in the fellowship of your Holy Spirit. We thank you for raising up among us faithful servants for the ministry of your word and sacraments. We pray that Michael may be to us an effective example in word and action, in love and patience, and in holiness of life. Grant that we, with him, may serve you now and always rejoice in your glory. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. May God, who kindled the fire of holy love in the hearts of the saints, pour upon you the riches of grace. Amen. May God give you joy in their fellowship and a share in their praises. Amen. May God strengthen you to follow them in the way of holiness and to come to the full radiance of glory. Amen. Now go forth into the world in peace. Be strong and of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil, but love the Lord your God, love your neighbor, and love yourself. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be on you and remain with you in this world in which we live, this day and forevermore. Let us go forth into the world, rejoicing in the power of the Spirit.